finish the final part of making our nav bar mobile compatible. All right. So what we're going to do in this video is we are going to get our drop down icon to show up once we hit that mobile state. All right. And then when uh, once it gets there, once our drop down icon appears, we are going to add the functionality that when this button is clicked, that we are going to create a new element structure for the rest of these list items to display. All right, so let's do the first thing first and go ahead and get our drop down icon to show up on mobile. All right, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Let's come back to our text editor. So this is the drop down icon that we're gonna get to display. And let's go ahead and grab the class. So we're gonna take the parent, we're gonna add top nav, and we're gonna grab the list item with our specific class and it's drop down icon. All right. Now if we come up here and check this out, remember on our drop down icon we gave it a display of none. Now one thing to note about the display property is it is very easily overwritten. So all we have to do is when we hit this media query here, we can give it a new display. And what I want to do is I want to give this a display of block. And here's why. When you put elements in a display of block, it makes it a lot easier to position uh, the element. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and then let's launch uh, the browser and see what we have going on here. So you can see that I've put it in a display of blocks. So I've given the drop down icon element a place to show up. But you can see that it's still floating to the left. Now I want to show you why it's still floating to the left, right? Because we gave it a, a place to show up, right? but we haven't told it where to display, so why is it going off to the left? So if you go ahead and you right click on the nav bar, click inspect, this is going to uh, bring up our inspect element so we can look at the elements on our page. We've done this before a little bit. If we come into here, here is our unordered list. If we dive down into the drop down icon right here and we click on it, we can look at the style properties here that are on it. So we can see the media query because it's detecting a max width of 680 pixels. And here is the drop down icon. Okay, we gave it the display of block that's showing. But now let's go up the food chain just a little bit. We're working with a list item here. So what is the default list uh, element style that we've put on this? Well, we can come down here and holy cow, look at this parent with the list item it is inheriting the float left uh, property value. Clear up the food train. So if we go up here, remember on our list items, we said, hey, give these all a float left. Even though we've hit our media query down here, it, we haven't told this element specifically how to be positioned. So it's just taken up the style properties from upstream here. So let's fix that and let's now overwrite the float property in our media query. So let's just write float right because we want this off to the right side, correct? So now let's come back to that. I'm going to go ahead and refresh and check that out. It's on the right side. And again, it stays in its perfect position because the only thing that we've overwritten is to tell it how to display and to float to the right. But the cool thing is that's happening is it's still inheriting all the, uh, the list and anchor properties, which we've added here, still inheriting all those stylings, and so it is keeping our element in perfect alignment here. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna create the element structure for the rest of the list items when we hit this button. Now let's take a step back and think about this a little bit deeper. So we could go ahead and, you, you know, work with this top nav class and maybe add an extra class to the, the parent here to try to build the structure of these new elements and say, hey, display this way now. But if we did that, those elements are going to take up all the space. And what I mean is, let me bring uh, this back up here. If we went ahead and added a, cl a class to our um, unordered list parent, that gave the this type of structure here, well, where's that gonna be put? Where's it gonna be stored? If we tried to store it in the nav bar, the elements are gonna already take up all the space. 
So we're going to have a huge nav bar that has the height of this right now. All right. Or we're going to try to hide it down over here to display later and it's going to push this entire UI down. So what we really need to happen is we need the element structure to all of a sudden immediately be built as soon as this drop down icon is pressed. All right. And in order to do that, we're going to have to use a little bit of JavaScript here to interact with our unordered list so that we can say, hey, when this is clicked, create the element structure. All right. Now, don't get scared or hesitate like, oh my gosh, we're, we're already diving into JavaScript. No, we're, we're only going to be creating a very, very tiny little snippet of code. And as you dive into the JavaScript uh, section of this course, you're going to be able to understand a lot more behind the scenes of what's happening. All right. So let's come back to our text editor. And we need to somehow get JavaScript to interact with this unordered list here. Now, if you remember earlier in this course, we went over the three different types of selectors. Okay. We went over the element selectors, class selectors, and ID selectors. And if you remember, class and ID selectors are very, very similar. All right. So we know how to create a class. Let's create an ID. All right. And we could call this anything, for an example. Uh, I'm just going to call it my name. And, um, you know, if we were to use this in our styles over here, you would just add a pound sign, the name of the ID, and then you could add the style properties here. Now, one thing to note is oftentimes IDs are very, very abused. All right. I see a lot of times people are taking IDs and adding style of properties to them, to the elements. It's, it's, it's a bad practice to do things like that. If you're adding style of properties to elements, you should be using classes. IDs are more specific and allow us to interact with elements on a page with JavaScript. That's the main use for an ID. So let's go ahead and add an ID to this parent class so that we can interact with JavaScript with this unordered list. So remember, you're supposed to give an ID a very, very unique name. And I'm going to call this uh, drop down click. Okay. That way it has a specific name. Now I know the action that we're going to be ha adding to this is when the element is clicked on. All right, cool. So we've got a way that we can interact with this element here. So let's go ahead and add just a tiny bit of JavaScript here. All right. So we learned that there was a couple of ways to add CSS styling um, to our to our HTML page. We covered like inline styling, embedded styling, and external uh, files, which we have here. So traditionally, in the grand scheme of things, when we're building websites and we have JavaScript to add functionality to it, we want to make external JavaScript files. Okay, just like we did with CSS. That's the best practice. However, in this example for this section for our website, we're going to add some embedded JavaScript. Okay, and it's okay this time because we're just learning some concepts here. In the future, make your JavaScript files external. Okay, so to embed JavaScript, come down to the bottom near the uh, the closing body tag here, and we're going to add a script tag. Okay, so type in script, and then let's give us some space to type in. So we are going to create a function. And what that means is we are going to add an action to our drop down icon when it is clicked. So before we write any scripts, we need a way to click on this drop down icon. And to do that, we can uh, come into the anchor tag. Let's see where this is uh, closing right here. And we're going to add a keyword called on click. All right. Oops, I didn't, I put this in the wrong place. Backspace that we want to add it inside of the anchor tag. So write on click, okay, equals, and then we're going to add just an empty string here, just uh, two quotes here. All right, and then after we build our function, we're going to put the name of that function inside here so that when it's clicked, it'll execute these uh, couple of lines of code. All right, so we know the first thing we want to do is uh, create our function. So to do that, we're going to use the keyword uh, function. 
and then the name of it. And let's see, I'm gonna just put this uh, drop down, drop down menu. All right, that's better. Uh, close that off with two parentheses, add your curly braces. Just like in CSS with your curly braces, you put your uh, conditions here. And we're gonna add some conditions to this, uh, this button click here. So what we wanna do is we basically wanna create a condition that says, hey, we need to check if this unordered list here of class top nav is in a mobile state with a max width of 680 pixels or less, or if it has a display that's larger than that. And in JavaScript, to check for conditions, we can use something which is called an if else statement, all right? So the first thing we want to do is grab our ID here. And to do that, I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to name it x. You can name a variable anything you want, and in short, you can think of a variable as like, kind of like a little bucket or something that can store information or a value, all right? And in this case, we need to store our ID in this variable so we can use it, and I'll show you why. So to grab our ID, we're gonna type in a keyword called document. This allows us to access our HTML page. And then another keyword called get element by ID, which allows us to grab our ID, put parentheses, and inside of here, we're simply going to put the name of our ID, which is drop down click. Cool. And then we will close this off with a semicolon. And the reason we did this is because I didn't want to write this whole thing out every single time. I'd rather just write X. It's a lot, a lot easier. All right, so let's create our conditions. So what we want to do is we want to make top nav a special class, okay? We want to append to this class and make it unique that says, hey, when this button is clicked, I want to create this new class so that I can add these styling properties to structure the list items here, these HTML elements. So we're gonna write if uh, parentheses x, which is our ID, we're gonna use a keyword called class name is equal to top nav. All right, then curly braces. We want to do our ID class name, and I'm gonna explain this a little bit better after I type it out. We wanna get our class name to then be equal to, any. we can name this anything we want. I'm gonna type in responsive because we're gonna be using it in our media query. And we can go ahead and close that off. All right. All right, let me comment out my code and uh, show you what's happening here. So command option forward space, so all we're doing is we're saying change top nav to top nav responsive. All right, we're appending responsive to top nav. And actually looking at this, I have a typo. Do a plus sign there because that means we're adding responsive and add a space right there. And the reason we're, we're adding a space is because all I'm doing is this class up here in our unordered list, I'm basically adding responsive to it when the button is clicked. That's all we're doing. And we need the space in here to make sure we uh, create the space between those two words. All right, so very cool. So that's all we're doing. So now I can use this class. This class is created, and we're gonna use it in our uh, media query like this. So when that button's clicked, now we've got a new class to work with, all right? And then we can uh, write else, if we're not in a mobile state, go ahead and we'll write out this class name again. Uh, we're just gonna take our class name and equal it to top nav. Okay, we're gonna leave it the same. All right, so that's it. One last recap, we detect if this unordered list is in a mobile state and if it is and we click this drop down menu, then we create a brand new class, which is topnav.responsive, that we can use in our media query. And then this way, we can structure the elements in our page to build the dropdown list, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and take our function name and let's add it to 
our on click event here. So now when we click this uh, drop down icon, now we're going to build the class and we have something that we can use in our media query. So let's go ahead and now that we have this new class, let's start building some, some structure to the way that we want these elements to appear. All right, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to grab the parent top nav. But remember, we just appended a new word to it. So top nav dot responsive. And I'm going to put this a position of relative. All right. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because when we hit that button, I want to just be a 100% sure that that nav bar isn't going to move on me. I don't want this unordered list like shifting around and being weird. So I'm going to put this uh, position of relative on it, okay? And then let's move down underneath that. And we're going to dive into our list items now. Let's see. Top nav dot responsive. Let's grab our list items. And this is what we're going to do with our list items. I'm going to give these a display of inline, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that all these list items are grouped together. And basically what it's doing is it's lining all of them up like a span tag, okay? It's just placing it within the unordered list element, just kind of like lined up in a row there. And then let's think about this uh, some more. So we've got this list item. Displays are cool. Displays and positions, you can easily overwrite the class if it's used somewhere else. So I want to show you something. So if we look at our list item, let's kind of scroll up the food chain and see what we've done with this list item. Well, check this out. It looks like that we have put a float of left on it. So that means technically this list item here, everything in it is going to float left. So to disable that, let's go ahead and add a float of none. I don't want anything uh, floating around here in my list item. Sweet. Let's dive down into the next level, which is going to be our anchor tag. So let's grab our anchor tags here. So we're going to do our top nav, responsive, the list item, and then the anchor tag. Now, right now with the display of inline, I told you everything's being grouped together, kind of like in a row on the same element here. But the way that our drop down works, if I show you over here, all these list items are stacking on top of each other like blocks. So what can we do to get it to appear that way? So let's give it a new display of block. And the cool thing about this is before on these list items, we hit all of these, right? Well, the, the neat thing is I told you that displays and positions you can easily overwrite. Well, now that we're targeting the anchor tags in here specifically, by giving it a display of block again, we're giving it a place to show up. So we want it to display in a block so that it stacks on top of one another. And then let's also give it a text align of left. Oops. All right. Remember when we create block elements, how it makes it easier to position things inside of those? Now, technically, like we could use floats and everything on here, but with this being a drop down list, and since we're working with text, I just want to grab those anchors specifically and move those over to the left and then just take the float off of the, uh, the list item here, okay? Because again, if we look up the food chain at our anchor tag, we put a text align of center. And when we hit this media query, we, we want to overwrite that and move everything to the left so it's not centered here. All right, so let's go through this. This is looking pretty good here. Let's go ahead and uh, refresh this and see what happens. Now, this is interesting. Do you see how the list is kind of like, like appearing and then being removed? It's hiding again. Let me show you something. This is where this href uh, comes into play. Now, anchor tags usually have like a link of some sort assigned to it. So when the browser, when you click on the, a link, the browser identifies this as a, an anchor tag and it wants to take you 
it wants to navigate you somewhere else. It wants to take you to that link, okay? And we have placed our icon dropdown uh, inside of an anchor tag. So the browser is trying to take us somewhere, but it's empty, so it doesn't know what to do with it. So this is just kind of a little JavaScript hack or something. <laughs> Type in uh, JavaScript colon void zero, and then end that with a, uh, a semicolon there. Everything in JavaScript, just like we did down here, we're ending with se semicolons. Now let me tell you what this is doing. So instead of putting like a URL path or a destination in this uh, reference tag here, we're basically telling the browser, we're giving it a, a JavaScript uh, command here, and we're saying, hey, the path you're going to is undefined. So just stay on the page that you're on. And by putting this in here, this is cool because when you click that drop down menu now, the browser is going to say, hey, my path is undefined, so I'm just going to stay here. And that's what's going to leave our list open. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, come back to your browser, go ahead and refresh it. And I click down, and you can see the menu stays here. Now, looking at this, you can see we've got one, one more problem here. Our, our uh, icon here is floating down to the bottom of the list. It's doing exactly what we told it to. We said, hey, display in a block element and text align to the left, but we need it to stay up here. So to do that, let's come to our text editor. Let's see, I'm going to add this. I'll just add it right above here because all of this stuff is happening when the button's clicked. I want to tell our drop down icon to stay in place first. And again, this is part of the cascade Kading a style sheet here. Um, I, I want to work with my icon first before the button is repressed and we restructure the elements. So I'm going to go grab our parent responsive because we're already working with the drop down icon when it's not responsive. Now I want to work with it when it is responsive. And we're going to take the list item of, sorry about that, list item of drop down icon. And what we want to do is give it a position of absolute. This way we're saying, hey, we don't want you to go anywhere. We want you to stay in the same position. And then just to make sure, we're going to give it a top of 0 and a right of 0. OK, cool. So now we're saying, hey, stay in your absolute position. And we want to make sure that you're in the top right corner and that you don't go anywhere. All right, so let's check this out one more time. Go ahead and refresh. Click it. And there we have it. We finished it. We have finished our drop-down menu. Our drop-down icon stays in the top right position. And we have added this really cool JavaScript function that creates a new class for us when this icon is pressed. And with this new class, we have recreated the element structure into a drop-down list. That's everything. Let's move on.